So we have created the added contact page. We have done the field validations. So there's a lot of work. If we are going to create a add contact page, the two pages look very, very similar, right? The functionalities are different. One of um, add a page is to update the contact. The add page is to add a new contact. So because of the similarities, we need to think about create a reusable control so that we can share that control between these two pages. So today in this video, we are going to work on creating a reusable control. Okay, let's go to the views folder and let's right click and create a new folder and let's call it controls. And to create a reusable control, we are going to create a new item and we're going to search content view. Okay. And then we're going to select the Zumo version. And we can call it just contact control, right? Within the contact control, we can see there are some placeholders and this is content view. This is not content page anymore. So what we can do is that we can go to added contact page and then we can basically select everything and cut it over. Okay, let's cut it over to the contact control here, right? Replace this vertical layout. Okay, and you can see that we only have one problem, which is this toolkit namespace problem. So for that, we can just fix that very easily and call it toolkit, just like before, referring to this toolkit. Now you can see that we don't have any problems in here. Now let's look at this contact control. What do we have here? We have these fields, the name, email, right, phone, and address. And these fields needs to be shared out, right? Currently, it's within the entry email, uh, and entry name, all of these entry fields, right? So we will need to share that out through a property. So let's create the first property, which is going to be the name. And we just can call it name, right? Because this is a contact control. Name refers to the name of the contact. Uh, of course, here we cannot use a regular empty getters and setters. So for getter, we will just return the entry name dot text, right? And as you guessed, the setter will just set the entry name dot text equals to the value, right? And I'll do that. The, the rest and then I'll come back. Okay, so I've created all of them. I have email, address, and phone number. For sharing properties, values, uh, we're good. Now we go back to the front end. We can see we have taken care of these properties. What about the buttons down below, right? We have an update button. We have a cancel button. I, sh I think we should change the name from update to save, right? And then here, it's called save just so that it can be reused in both add and edit page. Right? And here uh, we are going to create a new event handler. And for this one as well, create a new event handler. Going back to the code behind, and we have these two event handler. Here we don't need to take care of the routing right the navigation but we do need to validate right so let's go back to the edit contact page and let's think about how we can implement the validation here we can just cut these code and go go back to the contact control and then we can do our validation inside here but the problem is that display alert is not available Display alert is only available in in a page, right? It's basically a content page. So actually, actually, let's go back to our uh, added contact page. If I do a control Z to undo the change, and then if I right click, if I actually hover my mouse all over it, you can see it's the display alert is from page, right? And our content page is a page but the content view is not a page so display alert is not available here 
but that's fine that's fine we are going to delete it okay, both of them but here we will need to spit out the error so how do we spit out error we need to create a event okay, it's like a delegate in c sharp so here we can create an event uh, it's going to be an event handler and then the the parameter is going to be a string which will be the error message itself and then the event itself is going to be called on error okay so we can then scroll down to the bottom and then here if we encounter a problem right then um, we will need to spit out that error message we're going to say on error right and we need to use a question mark so basically if the event handler is registered right from outside then we're going to invoke the event otherwise we don't right that's the purpose of this question mark here i'm going to type dot and then invoke right and then who is the sender so we can just pass the sender from the event the click event and then what is the error message so that would be the same error message that we had before i wish i didn't delete them and just comment them out so that i don't have to type this but its name is required right and then i'm going to copy this and put it over here uh, the only difference here is that the error message is different so it's going to be error dot to string and that's it right that's it but how does the parent control knows that the save button is actually clicked on? Right? For that, we actually need to create another event. And type is event handler. This time, we can just use event arguments. And this is on save. Right? And since we are here, we're going to also um, react to the cancel button click. Right. So then here, when everything is validated, then we can tell our parent page, whichever page that uses this control, that the user clicked on the save button is actually validated already. Right. So whenever this event on save is triggered, is evoked, uh, we have already validated. Right. So here we can just invoke and then we use the sender and also the event arguments from the clicked event right and then of course on cancel uh, we can just say on cancel and then we invoke that event with the sender and the event arguments that's basically it that's our reusable contact control so now now let's try to use it go back to the added contact page and then let's see how we can use the reusable control first of all to use this new control, we need to provide a namespace because if we just type the control name, right, contact control, there's, it's not defined here. So let's go to here and then we're going to say controls. Again, whatever name you choose, I'm choosing controls. And then it's under controls. So we can find it right here then we can say controls providing the namespace well it's already showing up right all of them already showing up there's only one uh, and then we can give it a name and we can call it contact control and then we're going to register a unsafe event handler here and we're going to create a new one actually um we're not going to create a new one we're going to create we're going to reuse one because there's already one so it's this update right uh, and then here on cancel again we're going to reuse this one but on error we don't have it we can create a new event handler right and that's it you can see it is very very simple on the front end go back to the back end uh, it's even simpler because we are reusing these event handlers uh, this on save we don't use it anymore we don't use it we can delete it uh, the only thing that needs to be changed is here we don't have the the entry views anymore so uh, what we can do is we can say uh, contact control 
contract. Uh, I used the wrong name. It should be contact instead of contract, right? Contact control. So go back here. I need to fix this as well. Contact control on error. Okay. So here we're going to say contact control dot name right and then this is going to be contact control dot address and contact control dot email last but not least contact control dot phone number okay and then here the validations don't need to be happening here anymore because this event handler will only be invoked or triggered when the validation has finished right has passed what we do need to change is these assignments so i can just delete all of them and then i'm going to copy from here and paste it over here okay and then just fix the problems okay so now on error what do we need to do when we encounter an error this is a string which contains the error message so of course we just use the display alert from the page class and then title is going to be error as euro message is just the message right and then cancel is okay button so that's it that's how we use our reusable contact control let's let's give it a test Okay, you can see the application is running. Let's click on any one of them. And now we see the added contact page. No difference. Uh, let's try to see whether we can update. I put a dot there, but let me actually delete the at sign. Just try to trigger the validation problem. Right? So email format is invalid. So that's validation is going on properly. Uh, let's also try to delete the whole thing and then click on save this time it tell us, tells us not only the format is invalid but also it's required so let's put back the email address so john.do at gmail.com and then click on the save button now i have johndo at gmail.com going back phone number is whatever right address is one let's say toronto street click on save button and everything is basically still working right but this time we're using our reusable contact control in the next video we're gonna use the control right, the contact control in the add contact page and we are going to work on adding contact. I'll see you in the next one.